So this is going to be a tutorial of how to um, edit a hyperlapse. So the shooting I've done in a previous video linked below, I put it out yesterday. This is going to be using um, the Adobe products. So I use After Effects and then Premiere Pro. Right, set one, open up After Effects. This isn't the fastest laptop by the way, so there's going to be a lot of cutting in this video. Some people do use, actually quite a lot of people do use Lightroom as well, Adobe Lightroom. I haven't got the hang of it yet, so I only, that's mainly for colour correction and that. I, may, I just use the basic stuff in um, Premiere Pro to do that. So, After Effects new project, ta-da, we got a new project. Okay, here, you want to right click in this box at the side that says project, you want to right click in that, new composition. Uh, call it whatever you want, let's call it TL time lapse uh, demo. Frame rate, you're probably going to have, most people have 30, then depending on the amount of photos or whatever you do. This duration, I, I usually keep it around 20, sometimes I need more, sometimes I don't quite need that much. Okay, so you've got your composition there. Now, still in this box again, right click again. You want to import file. This will open up a load. Uh, let's go to one that works really, really nicely. Let's open up St. Mary's uh, 2. Yep, St. Mary's 2, this one will do. You want to select all of the files, all of the photos that are to do with your time lapse or hyperlapse. So you want to select all of them. And then it's very important that you tick this box here that puts JPEG sequence. What that does is convert all the photos that you have into a se into a video sequence. Right, and then you press import. You now have them over here. Yeah. And you drag these onto here. It's a very big image because I haven't set it up for 4K. I've only set it up for um, 1080p. So the image size will be massive. What you want to do you want to drag it down to the approach, hold shift when you drag it just saying so that it, because if you don't hold shift it will distort your image like this, so you want to hold shift until you let go. And the other thing is you want to make sure that your, this, that this frame of the image is larger than your video frame because it's going to want stabilizing and it will correct itself. Right, so if we just play through part of this, you'll be able to see how shaky and jittery it is before the stabilisation. Obviously, you still want to shoot as stable as you can, because otherwise it will look seriously shaky even after you try and smoothen it. Right, so this is how it looks before, so you can still see all the jitters and bounces. Okay, now what we want to do now, that is selected, just make sure that's selected. You want to go to Effect distort and go down it'll either be called warp stabilizer or warp stabilizer VFX select that and on this third box here you want to hit stabilize only okay what this does is it finds something that's consistent in all the frames for instance in this I followed the tower around so it will find the tower and then it will track that and keep that nice and steady and smooth and it will even out the photos so that it keeps that smooth when you hit the ones with crop, it will just keep that tower and it will ignore the whatever else is moving around in the in the shot. So you want stabilize only. You want to make sure it's on that. This will now take a while, as you can see I've got 372 images here. So time remaining four minutes. Awesome. 99%, yay! That's 100. Yes, okay. Now it's just finishing. So now if I play the first few seconds back, you'll see how much smoother it was, okay? So this is what it looks like afterwards. That's pretty smooth. So I'll play before again now. And then this is after. This is what it is after. Look at that. That's cool. Right. Now we go File. Uh, where are you? Export. Add to render queue. There 
there you go. This pops up at the bottom, TL demo, that's cool. Let's check it's in the right folder. Hyperlapses, yeah. And then you press render, and then you wait another zillion years, and eventually it will render. Awesome. If anything needs extra smoothening after you do this, you just go to here and you up the smoothness. It will lose a little bit of quality the more smoothness you put it. If you reckon you could do it with less smoothness, you can do it, but I'd advise keeping it as smooth as you can if you want to find the balance point between quality and smooth. Because without the smoothness, it will look and then without the quality bit, it will look fuzzy. So that's why I, the standard is 50% and that's usually what I'll stick with. But anyway, that has been um, how to edit. Once again, if you want to know how to shoot it, the link is below. I will be releasing my I'll be releasing my first proper dedicated showreel time lapse hyper lapse movie thing very shortly. That's pretty much done. Yeah, pretty much done. I'm very happy with the outcome of it. I'll advise you watch it and yeah. If you know anyone else is trying to learn high plaps or wants to learn high plaps or wants to see what they're like, tell them about it, share them. Cool, yep. Just wait for this and then I'll play it once more and thanks for watching. Ding!